The Dirty Kanza is never something to be taken lightly. Um, it seems to possess an entity of its own that a rider cannot control all of that race. The Dirty Kanza is an ultra-endurance adventure race through the Flint Hills of East Central Kansas. It's a 200-mile event that is uh, predominantly self-supported by the rider. You know, 200 miles of gravel road is going to be a physical challenge. More importantly than that is uh, the emotional challenge that a rider will face. It always, for me, starts with the fear. I feel like I have to go through that, that door of fear first to find you know, what's waiting for me. The area is a vast expanse of natural tall grass prairie, uh, rolling hills, uh, as the name Flint would describe, uh, very rocky. It's a, a key cattle grazing area. And because of that, uh, you know, it's not heavily populated. It, it is very, a, a very remote area. My name is Tim Eck. I'm a case manager for a program that works with emotionally and behaviorally challenged kids in the public schools in Duluth, Minnesota. And I'm also a sponsored writer with Salsa Cycles. We work with students who are in the public schools but have bumped into some difficulty. We're meeting them where they're at and, and our ultimate goal is to return them to public school uh, so they can be successful. Not all of the kids are successful and so they'll, you know, I don't want to say you just move on but sometimes you just move on. When I'm on my bike, my life is very different than my life here. You know, I can see those relationships and how they can come together and connect. But a lot of me being out on my bike is me getting away from all the things that are so hard at work and, and difficult and, and the things that I have grown so used to, I should not be used to. You know, some of these stories are bad stories. Um, and I'll hear them and feel that I've heard them before. So getting out on my bike and, and you know, taking the 30 mile route home when I could just ride three miles to my house, it's, it's not always just about trying to stay fit. You know, it's about kind of sifting through some of that stuff, you know, that's going on at work. When we line up at the starting line, I always see myself as an F-150 Ford pickup lined up against Corvettes and Porsches. The Corvette and the Porsche probably isn't going to make it to the end of a race like Kansas or Trans-Iowa, but an F-150, that truck's going to make it. I mean, it says right on my handlebar, every new bike I get, I tape nitty gritty, just to remind myself that that's who you are. You know, no matter what happens, you'll always see it through to the end of the day. You know, that's kind of the, what it takes to, to be a competitor of Dirty Kansas, is that gritty determination. If there's a, a common thread amongst all the participants, it's that person seeking to break down these, these barriers that, that we tend to create, um, uh, these things that we call our personal limits. You know, oftentimes these limits are nothing but false notions uh, of what we have created in our minds uh, as far as what, what we're capable of and what we're not capable of. And uh, a Dirty Kanza gives its participants an opportunity to uh, challenge those notions and uh, 
And I think that that is uh, um, part of the allure to the event. I had two goals. First was to finish in under 14 hours. And that would have, uh, to me, I knew that would be really difficult, but my theory is always goals shouldn't be easy and they shouldn't always be met because then they're not really goals. <laughs> um, and the second was to finish before the sun went down. Those were the two goals I had. So what happened? Um, 0 for 2. One of the things that adds to the challenge of Dirty Kansas uh, is the flint rock. It's the same rock that the Native Americans used for their arrowheads and their axes. So you can imagine what it can do to a bicycle tire. <laughs> The idea of racing the sun came from that year that I was bent on really having a, a top finish, which meant you know, I was hoping for a top 15, and I was in position to have all of that. Um, when the first flat tire hit, no problem, changed it quickly on my way. One flat tire ultimately led to five, uh, three of which, would ha which happened in a span of probably 15 minutes. I was absolutely devastated and just sweltering oppressive heat and really honestly thinking about quitting. The race took on a new perspective. It turned to finishing the race. It dawned on me that I still think I could get in before sunset. And immediately I felt energy come back to me. You can do this, but it's gonna be close. I said, you're gonna race the sun. I think this year will go down in, in uh, the minds of a lot of the participants as the year of the wind. There was probably about a 30 mile an hour wind almost all day. And I spent, I think, the entire middle leg by myself, just unable to find a group that was riding at the same speed as me and, and it fought the wind alone. It just started to get really demoralizing, just being alone out there and feeling your energy just drop and drop and drop, and then look down and find out how far in you are and how much, knowing how much you have to go. I was telling myself that we've got to be heading southeast to yeah. back to Emporia. Yeah. And then my heart will soar. <laughs> you really get the sense that you're on your own. And you know it's up to you to to get to the next checkpoint. So uh, you know if you're not prepared for that, it it, it can beat you. Seventy-five percent of the race, I was in the headwind, and it just took a chunk out of me and changed the outcome. How you feeling, buddy? Shell. <laughs> One more. Windy. Stacking the trans aisle on this thing. I mean, you can't just keep knocking out a multiple hundred mile rides. You know, it always makes me feel bad to see him hurting, but I just do what I know he needs, I guess, and rub his back and tell him he can finish. But I guess I try to be that inner voice that maybe gets lost in his head like in those moments. Remember you've done it before, you've done, you know, far more difficult things. There is a window of opportunity. If you can get in that window to affect change, good things can come for them. If you miss that opportunity, you may miss it all. Um, and it's very similar to racing the sun and, you know, Trying to complete something in a, in a span of time is what we're trying to do here too. I mean, like I said, there are a lot of moments that really remind you that you're doing something good. One of those instances happened with me for a student I'd worked with. There was one particular day where I did try to tell him a story about biking and, and what it means to set a goal for yourself. And about a year went by and one day this student came and said, I just want to tell you that a long time ago you told me a story about how you got bike sponsorship. 
and how you set a goal and you wrote down the steps it would take to get there and when you told me that I decided I wanted to see my dad again and so I wrote down the steps of how to make that happen. His dad had re-emerged into his life after I think it was 11 years and they were working on family therapy and, and I mean it just really got me right where I live <laughs> and so that moment was you know, freshened me up for another 22 years. The Dirty Kanza will decide if you are allowed to make it to the finish line, not the rider. So when you find the Kanza try to take you down and put you on the side of the road on your back in heat because you're really certain you're gonna die, you know, but then at some moment you get back up and you go again and the Kanza is saying, Okay, you pass that test. You can keep going. I was all by myself. And the only thing I could see was green and blue and a strip of gravel. No other riders, no telephone lines, no telephone poles, no fences. And I honestly felt like a, a speck that could at any moment just fly up into the sky and almost fall off the earth. I was the only one seeing that at that moment, and no one else was could feel what I was feeling, and and that's something that Kanza can give riders that that feeling of you know this is for you and it's for you only, and that's where Kanza has a whole bunch of that wrapped up inside of it, uh, in the ugly side and the spectacularly beautiful side as well. And in Kanza, you can't have both. They seem to be together. And if you want to see the good part, you might have to wade through the bad part. really living if you're not doing what you love to do and this is what he loves to do. We always joke about how you know he's gonna be the 90 plus year old biker and I'm gonna be the much younger <laughs> you know marathoner out there and if we're both the last person to finish that's okay because we're still doing it and we're living our lives and I think that that has been a huge part of our marriage. We don't want to just watch our lives go by, we want to experience it and do the things that we love. So there's one guy I work with who always asks me this, how long do you think you're going to keep doing this? And I just, I don't really like to think about that and I, I don't ever really answer him because I, I don't see it in the end. If I had my choice, it never would. And I would just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And, you know, I'd be in my 80s and trying to make those cutoffs. 